Hello everyone and welcome to History with Matt. Now today we're going to be doing Donald Trump's path to 270 electoral votes. What kind of uh, coalitions can he get? Does he need a, the Midwest? Does he need a, the Sun Belt? Or does he need a mixture of both? Before we get into it, I would like to thank my... I've got 9 subscribers from that house video. Uh, that kind of blew up. Kind of was surprising. Um, Kwong McKay and Michaelis Biz Bizaki. Um, there's a couple of guys who don't have their things uh, public. If you do want a shout out at the beginning of every video uh, for my new subscribers, you can email me. My email will be in the description. Uh, I just want to thank you for that. That was a, that was a really great video that uh, blew up and it really enthused me to keep going, getting nine subscribers now. But with all that out of the way, let's get into it. Now, Donald Trump's path to 270 electoral votes. Where is it? What's the math? What's the coalition? Now, first of all, we're going to be doing the states that Biden will win regardless. These will be the states of Washington, Oregon, California, Hawaii, Illinois, New York, Vermont, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Massachusetts, Maine's first, Maine at large, um yeah and i think that's really we'll we'll put uh we'll just do we'll just minnesota one one nine three and do, 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 do. i think that's in around it trump state says he's gonna win utah idaho montana wyoming north dakota south dakota nebraska at large nebraska's first nebraska's third kansas oklahoma uh missouri Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, South Carolina, and I feel at this point feeling comfortable putting both Ohio and Iowa in it. We will also put Colorado, New Mexico, Donald Trump also has the states of Alaska, uh, Texas, Florida, and at this point I feel more comfortable putting as not one of these states I'm not really going to focus on. I will give Joe Biden New Hampshire. I will give Trump Maine second. I will give Joe Biden Nebraska second. And that leaves us with these six states. That these will decide the who will be the president. As you can see in 2020, 0 0.63, 2.8, 1.2, 0.24. 0.331 and 2.4 all within two and a half percentage points well un, all within three but you get what i mean these states in 2016 0.73 0.22 0.72 georgia's a different story arizona 3.5 nevada 2.4 and with that we'll be using some of these we'll be going in depth on these six sets and what Trump needs to do to, to win them. Now, Michigan has been polling relatively well. We'll go into Michigan. Michigan has been polling relatively well for Trump. And now, why is that? A lot of it has to do with the auto workers. Now, we're going to be talking about Detroit, uh, Michigan's wild counties, uh, which, are going to be, which is Wayne County, uh, Oakland County, and Washington County. Washington County. These counties are massive, massive margins for Democrats. Wayne, 38 points. 46 points. Oakland, 14 points. If there is any sort of decrease in the vote by black voters in Wayne, by Arab voters in Wayne or Oakland, or due to the stuff that's happening in Gaza and in Israel and Palestine, that affects the vote. That affects. That just aff that affects the state. If there's a decrease in vote, as you can see in here, the margins were down slightly, and that caused Trump to win narrowly. And that is the key. So if there's any sort, of, these these guys won't vote for Donald Trump. Some may, but majority of them won't. They will stay at home. That decreases Joe Biden's chance of victory. We're also going to be focusing on another few uh, a few areas, and that's going to be the Flint-Saginaw 
area in Grand Rapids and Muskegon. Now, Muskegon and Grand Rapids. I predict in 2024 that Muskegon will go for Donald Trump. 0.5 in 2020 for Biden, 1.5 for Clinton. It's moving towards Trump and I think it will flip. Grand Rapids is another hand. Donald Trump has to stop the bleeding in Grand Rapids. But Joe Biden 1.6.1. In, in, in 2020, 2016, Trump won by 3. And I want to look back on this. 2016, Obama won the state by 9 points. Kent still voted for Mitt Romney for, by 7.7. 7. 2008, even though the state voted overwhelmingly by a safe margin... For Barack Obama, I think it was over like 16 points. Kent only narrowly went for Barack Obama. 2004, safe for Bush. 2000, safe for Bush. Why is that? This is the ancestral Republican areas. These are states. This is where Gerald Ford's from. These are the type of people who are Reagan Republicans. These are the type of people who are very suburban. These are the people who are off put by Donald Trump's personality. Trump doesn't have to win this county. But he needs to stop the bleeding. And that is one of the key areas that he has to do well in. Flint and Saginaw. Saginaw, in my opinion, is the, the, the true indicator of who's going to win the state. Voted for 1.1 for Trump. Voted narrowly for Biden. This is that swing county that will indicate how the state will move. How the state will go. Flint, how does he do with auto workers? How does he do in these Macomb? How, what, what's the margin? That is Michigan. So if we put that in the Trump column, he only needs one more state. He only needs Pennsylvania. Wisconsin. The likeliest state to flip, in, some, in my opinion. We'll go on to Wisconsin. Green Bay, the Bow counties. How does he do in Bow? What's the sort of margin? Does he win Door County, the, the the protector of the state, along with Sock, or along with Sock? How do the, how do those states do? How does he do in the Y counties? How does he do in the Zaki? zaki has been moving away from the Republican Party. Look in twenty sixteen, voted for Trump by eighteen, voted for Trump by twelve. Twenty twelve, even though Obama was winning the state, voted for Trump Romney by thirty. Even though Obama was in the state by, what was it, 14 points. Vote for McCain by 20. Again, these ancestral Republican regions, how does Trump do in them? He is good at, and he is massively good at doing it well in the Driftless area, these sort of pinky red counties. How well does he do there? How does he do in Green Bay, another massive area? Otagami and Winnebago. How does he do in them? Those are, that's the three areas. And then we have to talk about the, the population centres in Madison and Milwaukee. In Dane County, does Biden get over 80%? Because that, again, there are how many votes there is there. Look how many votes there is in Milwaukee. This is important. At the moment, depression among voter depression among black voters. Wisconsin, put that in his column. He only needs one more state. Pennsylvania, we'll talk about Pennsylvania. This state, you know, Joe, uh, Joe Biden has a great familiarity with state. Scranton, Joe, uh, Lackawanna. We look at Lackawanna in in 2020 and 2016. Only, only vote for Clinton by 3.5. Monroe, 0.76. Trump won Northampton. 2021, what do we see? 6.4, 8.4. Trump, uh, Biden flipping Northampton. This, um... Luzerne, 19.4. 14.4. These sort of margins matter. Erie. You know, if we look at Erie County, narrowly voted for, uh, for Joe Biden by one point. Northampton, narrowly voting for him by near, near enough a point. Those two states will indicate how this state is going to go. The Mo Philadelphia, what type of margins does he have there? He's already, look at that voter margin. Look at the margin there. 600,000 votes for Biden. Pittsburgh, how's Trump doing there? Beaver County, how's Trump doing there? If Trump wins Northampton or Erie, 
and keeps his margins there, he wins. How's he doing in northeastern Pennsylvania? Do they maybe they pick up a congressional seat? And that's all he needs. If he has that, he can lose. I think he can lose. No, he can't lose. Uh, he needs all three of these states, and he wins. Same for Biden. These three states, they will they will indicate who will win the election. We'll put these into the toss-up column now. And we'll talk about the Sun Belt region. Georgia, Arizona, Nevada. Now, Nevada has been moving away from the Republican Party. That is... That much is clear. Uh, apologies for that. I'm talking about Georgia. Georgia. Look at these margins. In Fulton County. 70, 72% of the vote. What will happen there? DeKalb. 83%. Uh, Douglas. 61 Cobb. 56 Quinnette. 58 These are all for Joe Biden. Henry County, Newton County, Rochdale. These, not that long ago, were Republican states. 2012, or Republican counties. Gwinnett, 9.2. Cobb, 12.4. The voter demographics in this area has massively shifted. Look at, where's, uh, where's Douglas? Douglas, Douglas, Douglas. 23.4. This, the, the mass uh, emigration internally into the United States from black voters, from states like Michigan, from states like uh, Pennsylvania, from, from the Northeast into this area of George, of Atlanta where there is a resurgence of black culture there. Will these guys vote, come out? One of the biggest mistakes the DNC has made this election cycle was not hosting the Democratic National Convention in Atlanta instead of choosing Milwaukee. And I can understand that. But if you want to be creating new ground, if you want to be putting Republicans on the offense, on the defense, you have to be uh, aggressive and you have to put it in Atlanta. You know, look how red some of these uh, rural districts are for Trump. These will add up. These will get redder. I have no doubt about that. These will get redder. But will these get bluer? Yes. Which one comes out more? At the moment, Trump wins it. Polling suggests that. The vibe suggests that, um, among other things, especially polling. Arizona. Arizona is a tough one because it comes down to one county. None of these swingy counties, none of these counties are. This is it. Whoever wins uh, Maricopa will win the election. Will Trump win it? Possibly. Does Trump need to win it? No, but Trump needs to get this extremely narrow. Uh, for him to have any shot of winning uh, Arizona. Look at 2012. Romney won it. 10 points. Trump, only 2.8. That was with a big 30 party vote. Joe Biden won it by 2.2. And that was enough to win the state. Say if Trump got this down to 1.15%. That would probably be enough. He doesn't need to win the state, but he needs to get it down. So that is the one that needs to be, that needs to be won by Donald Trump. Put Arizona in. And we go to Nevada. Nevada. Comes down to two counties. Washoe uh, and Clark. The two population centres. So it comes down to the, those counties. The population centres. As well as these rurals. How well are they turning out? How well... Um, you know, probably the reason they lost Senate race in 2022 was because of the snowstorm. These people couldn't come out. 16,000 votes. 3,000 votes. 800 votes. These add up. These may seem insignificant. 9,000 votes. Look at Carson County. Or Carson City, 16,000 votes, 1,000 votes, 20,000 votes in here. Um, this matters, 17,000 votes, 2,000 votes. But it comes down to Las Vegas and Reno. Reno is moving left, Las Vegas is moving right. Will these offset each other? It comes down to the rurals. And now we've all talked about every single state. Now we will talk about Trump may need, Trump may lose Arizona and Nevada. He may win Georgia, but he only needs, this is the combinations I'm talking about, he may lose Wisconsin, Michigan, but he needs only needs a combination of Georgia and Pennsylvania, and he wins. You know, he may win Michigan and, say, Nevada, and lose Pennsylvania. That, that, these are the sort of math, this is the sort of math that comes into it. You know, there's also, uh, say, if Trump wins Wisconsin 
and um, Democrats flip Georgia. That's another one. But then it's the different strategies between the Midwest and the Rust Belt. You need a combination of both to win. And then that's 312 to 226. That's the margin. He only needs that. But say he loses, um, say he loses Michigan. He needs to pick off a Nevada. He needs to pick off a, a Georgia. He needs to pick off an Arizona. And that's the sort of margins that these are sort of narrow margins that will indicate this election. But guys, I think I've talked enough about this at length. Um, this has been my video. I've been History with Matt. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, consider liking the video. Uh, if you want, email me on my email. It is available. It's free. Um, if you want to subscribe, again, it's free. You will be joining a growing channel now officially, which is something to be interested in. But I've been History with Matt. Thank you very much for watching.